Yeah, I'm sure Todd. Well, Todd's the real one. He's the real one. Yeah, it's totally fine. Okay, we're back here live at SiliconAngle.com's exclusive coverage of Riley Media Strata Conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. i with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Josh Wills, who's a data scientist at Cloudera. You all know who Cloudera is, and we're at Strata. It's a you know, big emphasis on uh, data science and data scientists. Josh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So data science is all the rage, and you know you have the guy who invented the term, Jeff Hammerbacher, who's uh, great to see him actually leading the news cycle for EMC Greenplum these days. Uh, you know, in all the news press, <laughs> highlighting his famous quote about uh, uh, you know all the best minds clicking on ads is kind of a disgrace or well, embarrassment. I know. Um, yeah. Great quote. Uh, great. As someone, as someone who used to work on advertising systems, I particularly appreciate that. Quote. And, it's, and yeah. we have books coming out here and great content about real, real problems. Uh, but in the enterprise world, data science is all the rage. Yeah. Um, so we want to talk about that segment here around data science and what you guys are doing. Uh, and so, so let's, let's break it down. So relative to your world right now, what you're in, what is the current view of data science? Obviously, there's a little bit of data science trending that's going on where, yeah, you know, hey, I'm a data scientist now, I have to have my Twitter handle just to kind of, you know, yeah. make, make fun of myself and saying I'm a data scientist. But what does it mean to be a data scientist? Oh, I think, you know, honestly, it means to be a data janitor, I think, more than anything else, right? I think it's like, you know, you try to describe people what it, what it is I do, how do I spend my time, right? I think of myself as a mathematician. I think I'm a math nerd, writing equations, right? And I think, you know, in the public perception, people see, like, Nate Silver, they see some of the cool visualizations the New York Times guys do, and so they imagine, like, you know, kind of like a like minority report, you know, like the crazy, like, moving yeah. stuff <laughs> around, right, that kind of thing. To me, I'm, I'm Forrest Gump, and I have a toothbrush, and I have a whole bunch of data, and I scrub. And that's, that's really like, that's really what I do. Yeah. And what does that entail, obviously? Data, do you look at data, because we had a big chat, Dave and I, the other morning about yeah. data quality and what does raw data mean, with some stuff on the press here. But, you know, data is now part of the developer community. And we had talked to someone uh, about Python being an excellent language for data scientists. Yes, absolutely. So what are some of the tools of the trade for scrubbing, interrogating, or training data to learn? Oh. So these are all kinds of concepts that we call data as code. Yes, So right. what can you share with folks out there that you're seeing as data as code, and how are developers playing with data, and how is data evolving? Oh, okay, wow, that's a very broad question. Um, my personal stack is primarily uh, Python, Hive, and R. Those are like kind of my three go-to tools for just about all of my data cleansing, you know, data examination, like just kind of sort of like getting myself familiar with the data set. That's primarily what I use. Um, but I mean, it's, it's like a religious debate among data scientists when it comes to their tools. Like you, Hadley Wickham, it's R and ggplot all the way for everything, right? For other people it's Python, for other people it's SAS. Um, you know, a lot of SAS It's a preference issue, it's a personal it really, feel, it's a right? Very, but it's, I mean, it's like, it's, it's personal, it's like religious. It's like you can, have, you can have my SAS when you pry it from my cold dead hands kind, <laughs> of, kind of thing. Let's talk about that for a second, because sure. obviously given that, you know, for whatever version of a hammer you want or kind of tools you want to use, uh, what are the table stakes? So in your mind, like the minimum, minimum things that a, a data science needs mm. to have at their disposal for tools. Oh, in terms of tools. Oh, some kind of scripting language. Um, R is a great language, but it's, it's primarily tabularly oriented, and I'm usually working with data before it's been nicely formatted into tables. It's still like log files or some other kind of binary format, so it really requires a real programming language just really to even get started at all. Um, so I think of that as So like, to set it up. Just to set it up, just like for an absolute bare, because then beyond that, a lot of it can just really just be counting things. Like a lot of what data scientists do, you know, is, is just count stuff. And that turns out that when you count things over enormous data sets, it can work like surprisingly well. What's the mindset right now in terms of, we're, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, got operational data warehouses and business intelligence tools out there that, that people have out there, and it's yeah. known queries, you know, SQL is yeah. one, one of them, right? right? Only one dimension. Um, that's kind of the old way, it's still relevant, installed oh, in, yeah. in, in these accounts and large numbers. But this whole new way is emerging, where you don't necessarily know yet, it's a lot of unstructured data, you need to uh, code on the data. Mm. What are some of the, what are some of the architectural data platforms look like to you when you're looking at data sets? Because you, mm. you're dealing with multiple sets of data, you got to pull it in from multiple sources, it could be log files, machine data, user data. Yeah. What's your, what's your point of view on all this? Oh wow. This new way. The new way, oh that's a great question. Um, 
So I think it, there's sort of two phases to it. Um, right now, I like, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a Hadoop vendor and all that kind of stuff. I really like a lot of the in-memory tools that are coming along right now. I really like Spark. I really like, like SAS's laser server. I think there's a lot of great stuff for just doing in-memory exploration of data sets um, when you're just kind of getting familiar with it. But like a lot of my problem with doing like a relatively small sample from a data set is I will miss a huge number of edge cases that will completely screw up my analysis. So if I'm grabbing like 100 megabytes from a terabyte, it's no good for me from a sampling perspective. I actually need a much larger chunk of that data in order to get started. Um, that said though, I still think of like, you know, the typical data warehousing models, um, all the typical sort of tabular tools, Tableau, all that kind of stuff, as being fantastic for publishing results, for sharing results, for like making it, like basically enabling other people to do analysis on data sets I've prepared. Um, so I mean, that's, you know, like that's always sort of the end state for me, is how do I publish this? How do I empower other people? So, so, uh, one more question, okay. Dave, one more oh, question. Okay. On, on, on the data science side, one of the things, collaboration is, is a big thing, yeah. where teams are working together, and you have a global workforce, you have people in India, you have a follow the sun strategy. Mm. Um, is there anything, that because we haven't found anything yet to really talk about around uh, using the cloud or other vehicles to put data somewhere where people can jump in. Are there tools out there for on the collaborative side of uh, data science analysis? Oh, that's a good question. Um, nothing that like pops out at me as being particularly compelling yet. That sounds like a very good, are you suggesting like maybe you and I should start a company to do that or something? Or is that, <laughs> no, actually, it's a need that people I think we're I, hearing have. I, I, is, I would agree with that. I think that's probably fair. I think, I mean, collaboration, not even like across the globe, across the office. I don't think collaboration in terms of analysis and seeing like I really want like almost like a social network to see what kinds of analysis, what kind of queries are my coworkers doing? Um, how are they preparing data sets in kind of a, you know, very lightweight, very like ad hoc kind of fashion, I think would be incredibly useful. So yeah. So LinkedIn's great, right? You can go to LinkedIn, they are. skills. Those they, are mine. Well, yes, exactly. And this is there like, okay, what do you need to be a data scientist? So, uh, so right. like Hadoop, machine learning, statistical modeling, obviously stats, data yes. mining, Python, big data job, a data science R. Yeah. What's missing? I mean, curiosity about data, data hacker. I mean, oh, that's it. I think you know, a relentlessness, I think is like one of the qualities I point to. Like it's sort of the joke I make as a data analyst, uh, sorry, Data analyst has a question. If the tool doesn't answer the question, if SAS doesn't answer it, if like the data warehouse doesn't answer it, the question doesn't get answered. The data scientist says, if the tool doesn't answer my question, I go get a new tool. It's like unacceptable that my question not be answered. It's a very kind of generation Y sort of entitled approach to, uh, to answering <laughs> so, questions in data analysis. So you say go get a new tool. That's on the presumption that the the answer exists in the data, how do you know that? Presumption of the answer, um, gut feel, you know, okay, intuition. Gut feel, yeah, okay, exactly. so okay, All those so add that to the Bad, list. naughty words you that, know? that we, the data <laughs> people don't talk about. Hunch. So, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, and, and I'm wrong a lot too, so I mean, a lot of time my intuition leads me wrong, leads me astray, but. <laughs> and so know, you go it's, it's got me this data. far, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. What do you yeah, see for um, computer science and or disciplinary type uh, uh, paradigms? I mean, we were talking, uh, last night at, uh, in, in the mm. Hyatt Lounge area around yeah. you know, fourth generation open source. You know, you've seen this movie before, all those cliches, but you know, if you look at some of the computer science paradigms like AI, ontologies, yeah. um, reasoning, these out learning machines. Yeah. Um, do you see any of these, those paradigms that are more relevant now than, than before? I mean, they kind of go through peaks and valleys. I see machine learning is, has been around for a while, it's modernizing. Is what, sure. you, what do you see out there that's that's rearing its head as a relevant paradigm for oh. these kind of data science uh, situations. I am, I'm honestly like sort of, I, I'm sort of like Charlie Brown with the football. I'm, I'm kind of really excited about deep learning and neural networks right now, like the, you know, the cat recognition stuff that Google was doing. Uh, I find that stuff really, really exciting. I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic about that. I think, but these, these sort of these trends tend to be so cyclical, right? Like neural networks were hot in the 60s, they were hot in the 90s, they're hot again now. So it's just like wait, like whatever was hot like, you know, what, 25 years ago will be hot again in five years. AI's coming think, back, Joe Turian, Joseph Turian told us, right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Has it has never gone away. And, and deep well, learning in particular. never gone away, but people used to run away from the term. Well, Google, AI, was, right? Google was on and talking about, you know, um, code is evolving and learning code, and yeah. you know, we say data is code for developer standpoint. Um, you know, that's one paradigm in the data warehousing market that's kind of being disrupted is there's one data mark and you, you interrogate it. Okay. And now the people talk about, you know, okay, one data mart evolves into two data marts of the same data, so data's a you know, living, breathing kind of uh, thing. Yeah, um, so, so. so that mm. requires a different technology yeah. uh, to do that. And, when, and Charles from Cloudera talks about Impala being that resource-based, you know, distributed resource. Right. Um, what's your take on that? So you work at Cloudera, so you probably oh. agree. I mean, I, I certainly agree. I guess for me as a data scientist, I mean, Impala right now, Impala right now is obviously not a data warehouse by any, by any source of the imagination, no. right? But it does two things really well. Um, one, it helps me debug intermediate outputs in my ETL and my machine learning pipelines. 
And two, it's a really compelling way for me to come up with new dimensions and new fact tables and new perspectives on data that is in the data warehouse. Things where like, I have a hypothesis, I have, a, I have an intuition, I have a gut feel mm -hmm. that something would be useful. This would be a useful perspective on the data. A data warehouse architect should not re-architect his data warehouse based on my hunches, right? Impala lets me actually like create it, prove that it's actually useful, and then at that point publish it to the, to so the data warehouse. So I want to follow real. up on that. So, so yeah. prior to Impala, um, you yeah. wouldn't be able to do that, or it would just take you longer? So is it making you more productive, or allowing you to do things that you couldn't have done before, or both? Oh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, I was, like, was going to say it was sort of like a political advantage in some way. I didn't have to beg and plead with the data <laughs> warehouse architect to let me try this crazy idea. I can just try the crazy idea, yeah. see if it works, and then if it does, fantastic, and, yeah. and make it available to lots of people. Okay. So I think it makes me like, it, it basically it frees me to allow, it enables me to take on some more of my crazy ideas than I might not have before. Crazy uh, ideas, yeah. as, uh, the crazy ones as uh, Steve Jobs put out in the ad campaign, it's really making a difference. Uh, Josh Willis, data scientist from Cloudera, uh, final uh, comment, I'll give you the last word. Mm -hmm. um, what's on your to-do list the next 12 to 14 months on a, from a personal data science standpoint oh, wow. and from a business standpoint? I mean, obviously you, you mentioned you're interested in, in geared up on neural networks and those kinds of things. Yeah, what specifically are you working on that you're excited about, both personally and from a data science personalization, personal standpoint and for Cloudera? Um, I'm very interested in making uh, machine learning techniques available to a wider audience. I think from an academic perspective, people tend to focus on the fastest algorithm, like speed, 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 accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. I'm much more interested in easy to use. Anybody, like any statistician, any SAS programmer, anybody can just pick these tools up, apply them to a problem and get them out there. Um, that is to me, it's not something that's going to be like a huge deal for the industry in the next 12 months, but I think it will be a huge deal in about 18 or so, and that's kind of where I try to keep my focus. Simplifying, making it Simplify easy. that, make this stuff easy to use. Primarily and easy to use. Anybody can do it. Robust, reliable, easy to debug. No one ever, no one ever went out of business for making things easy to use and simple <laughs> and reducing the steps it takes to do something, so yeah. that's a good, good, good point. Thank you. Josh yeah. Wills with Cloudera, data scientist. We'll be back with our next guest inside theCUBE right after this short break. Thanks a lot.